Next thing. I'm not justifying what Ollie did. I'm telling you what decision I made. I thought I've probably done that a thousand times in my life, which is fine. So I got lucky. People get lucky. Ollie made a decision that he wished he could have done better. But when I talked to Ollie, I told him, you're lucky. You got out. You got out light because you make a lot of money to play football. Huh. You make a lot of money to play football. Crazy stuff. I would tell you that <clears throat> we're gonna have uh we're gonna have Jake Merrill in here in just a few moments <clears throat> to talk a little bit about this. He's obviously been in locker rooms <clears throat> playing division one football at the University of Washington as a safety. Um he'd be able to tell you a little bit about culture. Uh, much like we heard from Coach last night. Culture is what you allow. Culture is, a lot of times it's used, you know, you hear coaches talk about culture all the time. And it's it's always to kind of shine up what they've got going on, right? But in this case, I think it's pretty clear that a lot of times this stuff is just BS. Let me go ahead and say hello to everybody else who's popped in. Steve Gas Cat, welcome into the show. Mars Jams. Hankster, along with the first lady in here. I hope she's still in here. There, T Boomer, Bloody Guns. Who else we got in here? Yep, Benji. Glad to um glad to see everybody in here. Make sure you hit that like button. Uh would love to speak with Mike Gundy. My dad was killed by a, a drunk driver. What an asshole. And this is the whole point. Look, Georgia had a DUI driver recently. Oklahoma just had two of them in the last month as well. Nobody's sitting here saying that you have to destroy the kid's career, or I don't even care what the punishment is. We talked about this last night. The best thing that he possibly could have done Go ahead and let, I thought it was a good idea to let Ollie kind of go face the music in front of the media himself. I thought it was a smart idea because you figure that Ollie's smart enough and, and a good enough kid. I'm not even saying that he's a bad kid. I'm not, I'm not bad mouthing this kid, not whatsoever. I don't want to look like a hypocrite or sound like a hypocrite to say that I believe that they should have done X, Y, Z in any way, right? I've also lost somebody to a drunk driver that was very close to my family. Uh, my uncle that was, you know, to me, he was, he hung the moon whenever I was a kid. <clears throat> he died at the age of 24. Way too early, right? And in these cases that we're talking about right now, nothing bad happened, right? Nothing bad happened. They got pulled over. Yeah, they got arrested. They're going to pay whatever fines and and go through all the, the process of, of being a DUI driver, losing your license, having to go to classes, do all that kind of stuff. That's fine. In the case of the Oklahoma kids, we know that they get a date with Schmitty. Lots of dates with Schmitty, probably. Lots of running stairs and doing stuff until they throw up. Knowing what I know about Macari Vickers' parents, better be, I mean... It's not going to be easy on on him either way. It wouldn't have been either way, right? I don't know that much about Dion Burks's family and what he, you know, what kind of family he comes from or what they would have thought about it. But I'm guessing that if he is a player that they brought in through the portal, they built a relationship with him and they liked the character that he had because that is the culture of Oklahoma football, regardless of what Cody Light wanted to tell us a couple of weeks ago in here. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, Kimberly K. Yeah. And see. Yeah, listen, I mean, I go back to what Shelby said here. It's absolutely I don't know that the NCAA has any any grounds to stand on at this point. And it, and here's the thing. Again, it's not even, it really is not about Ollie Gordon. This is not about Ollie Gordon. This is not about Makari Vickers. This is not about 
Deion Burks. This is not about uh, Trevor Etienne. This is about what you allow is what you promote within your program. And we constantly get to hear about how great and glowing cowboy culture is at Oklahoma State. And it's not. It's a bunch of bullshit most of the time. And every year you get Mike Gundy goes to the Big 12 media days and he makes an ass of himself and says things that he doesn't need to say. It's, you know, half truths if that a lot of times. But this one was true. He truly believed what he had to say. To sit there and say what he said here, you know, I thought I've probably done that a thousand times in my life, which is fine. So I got lucky. I told him, you're lucky. You got out light because you make a lot of money to play football. You know what? The fact that he believes that this is what makes it okay is that you make money to play football now is insane to me. Because that just, that whole belief that a lot of people carry about football players and, you know, star athletes in general in America, that they get special treatment because of their abilities. That just promotes more of that. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, again, I don't really care what your punishment is. What you can't do is tell your entire program that it's no big deal, which is exactly what he just did. He told his program, he told everybody else, in the anybody who was listening, no biggie. I did it a thousand times. What about the kid from Oregon, just graduated, going to be a rookie cornerback with Minnesota? Him and his two best friends from high school were killed by a drunk driver over the weekend. Lost his life way too young, all three of them way too young of an age. Not only will he never play football again, he'll never see his family again. These are the things that could happen. If you're not sending an example and, and trying to get something and sending, sending a message to the rest of the program that this is not going to be tolerated, that yet you can say, yes, hey, we're lucky that this is all that happened. Absolutely. We talked about this last night, too. All you had to do was say, we're going to handle this internally, you know, and say the right things there. He knows it was a mistake. I know it was a mistake. We can't have it. We're not going to have it on our program, even though it would have been full of shit that he was saying that because we know how he really feels now. It would have been the right thing to say. It wouldn't have told the rest of his program the 120-something kids in that locker room, that eh, it's no big deal. Because nothing bad, you know, or tragic, I should say, happened, you can say it's no big deal, but it is a big deal. If, it can, if you don't learn a lesson from it, what about the next time? What if you lose the player himself? What if, you, what if he kills somebody else? Welcome to the show, David Talks Broncos. That's David Talks Buffs, too. Hey, what's up, man? Thank you. <laughs> Lay off the hair dye. Well, I don't know. that the, That's a good question here, MWG. How many years before we expect Gundy to retire? They've been talking about some kind of succession plan, I guess, with Brian Nardo. Is what, that's what Cody says. <clears throat> I don't know how much I believe that. Um, but yeah, it's, listen, it is uncomfortable, but I'm not, again, I'm not saying that you had to freaking throw the kid off the team or suspend him for, for a whole game. Even I don't care what you do. I, I really don't. If that was his punishment to make him go and play fine. So what? So what? Make him run, 
make him do what I, it's you can handle that inside you can handle that with internally within your program right you can do that now when it continues to happen and you know something bad happens and look we've seen it at Georgia you know the 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 deal after the second national championship where the kids were drag racing or whatever seems that alcohol was Pretty heavily involved in that, too. It's tragic. Tragic. Kids losing their lives over it. And it happens every day, folks. It happens every day. I don't know how long until he retires. I know that they do have something... It's a pathetic statement from irresponsible leadership creating diva is very disheartening and absolutely right. What do you mean it's not insane? That makes it even more insane, Benji. I get it that hey, listen, it happens. And I'm not telling you again, I'm not there's one, I'm not even trying to talk about that. What I'm trying to say, I don't care about what your punishment is, but don't sit here and tell me about your culture in your locker room if it's not happening the right way. And I'm not saying it's perfect in Oklahoma either. I'm not. They just had two players that went through this too. What we didn't hear from Brent Venables and what we didn't hear from Kirby Smart was, no big deal. I've done it a thousand times. In fact, you didn't hear anything from them. We're going to handle it internally, if anything. I mean, how they handle that is up to them. But it's your cult. Listen, here's the thing it's your culture that takes a hit. It's your culture that takes a hit. I don't know if Jake has the link or what. I think he should, but I thought he did. Yeah, it's in there. Jake, if you're in there somewhere, it should be, it's in your Twitter. There he is. Welcome into the show from Set the Tone podcast, our friend Jake Merrill. What's up, coach? How you doing? What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know, it's bright and early here on the West Coast, as usual. Bright so and bright and early. Love it. Um Good to be in, man. It's been a minute since I've been on, so dang, dude, it's nice to be back and uh, see you again, dude. Hey, good to see you, man. I've been on a rant already, so (laughs) I'm already wound up and rocking and rolling, man. (laughs) Yes, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Well, it's kind of an extension of what we were talking about for a good part of last night, you know, talking about Mm -hmm. Mike Gundy and what he had to say, and I don't know how much you saw this, but we'll we'll just go through this one more time. You know, the first thing he had to say was he's going to play And when obviously he was being asked about what, if any kind of punishment was going to go on for Ollie Gordon after his DUI arrest, he says he's going to play. I'm going to do what we think is best for Oklahoma State. I think it's best for Ollie Gordon to play. There's any punishment, it's make him carry the ball 50 times in the first game. Now, that's all well and good and funny or whatever the hell. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had no problem with him saying, you know what, we're going to go ahead and take him to Big 12 Media Days and let him kind of face the music there. And and you know what I mean? Yeah. Coach, welcome into the show. Good to see you, Stephen G. As well, um, guys. And and MWG, I think you're right on this. I just want to say this: people in college, we all do. Let me tell you, in the military, we're whether you were in college or in the military or whatever. And I went to college mm-hmm. after the military. But yeah, you think you're immoral. You think you can get away with whatever the hell you want. We do dumbass shit. That's what I said. This is really not about Ollie Gordon. This is really not about. Uh, Deion Burks is not about Makari Vickers. It's not about uh, Trevor Etienne, other than the fact that they made mistakes that mm-hmm. you got to hold them accountable in some way because what you what you allow is what you promote. That's mm-hmm. the whole point of this of this whole thing this morning that I just I kept thinking that in my head all all last night was just and you know the things that you let people get away with is what you're it's what you're promoting them to do. You're allowing them to do it. So you're encouraging it. You're encouraging yeah. it. You're allowing it. You could say it a million different ways. But when it comes to your football program, and I, and I really wanted to ask you. 